We all know about termites. They're bad. They eat our houses. <laughs> We'd be better off without them. But that's not the whole story. What if I told you that we should thank termites for putting food on our plates? Of course, there are bad termites. The pest species of termite underpin the entire urban pest control industry. But the majority of termites do no harm. In fact, they work the soil, help plants to grow, including crops, and that's why we should be thanking termites for putting toast on your breakfast plates. I've worked with termites for over 25 years, and when you hear a little bit more about their remarkable industrious lives, I hope you'll think differently about termites too. Think about termites. Who does that? <laughs> Maybe when you're buying a house, and that's a word you don't want to see written on the building inspection report. <laughs> There's around 100 pest species of termite on the planet. There's over 3,000 species of described termites. So 97% of all termites are not pests. They eat wood, right? Well, around 25% of species do. Another 25% of species eat dead grass, dead leaves on the ground, twigs. Another 50% eat soil to extract little bits of de decomposed vegetation that's mixed inside. So how does this allow a termite to be good, to be useful, to put toast on your breakfast plate? Let's look at an individual termite. Prepare to be underwhelmed. <laughs> They're small. Most species are two, three millimetres long. They're pale, thus their name white ant, which is kind of ironic. You'll see why in a minute. They're pale because of their exoskeletons. Now, the exoskeleton is that shell-like skin that insects have, and most of them have hard, strong, armour-like exoskeletons. But not our friend, the termite. They are thin, flexible, weak. And that makes them kind of soft and squishy and really easy prey for their predators. And their worst predators, their biggest enemies, are real ants. Those thin exoskeletons are also not very good at keeping the water in their bodies. They dry out really quickly, especially when they're exposed to sunlight. Not that a termite has much use for light, because they're blind. So we look at an individual termite and we see a small, pale, weak, blind, kind of hopeless insect. How could this be any good? It's because they're social. Termites have strength in numbers and their large numbers allow them to be a powerful ecological force. How many numbers? Look to tropical rainforests. 15% of all animal life, in terms of the mass, the weight, are termites. That's all mammals, birds, reptiles, frogs, other insects, spiders, scorpions, centipedes, slugs, snails. 15% of all that weight are termites. Go into savannas, a bit drier. Double that number, 30%, nearly a third. Think about the African savannas and those amazing big mammals that we all admire. Elephants, rhinoceros, giraffe, zebra, wildebeest. You get all those mammals and put them on a ginormous set of scales and they will weigh less than all the termites that are underneath their hooves. Because that is where termites are, hiding in the soil, escaping their predators, avoiding that harsh sun. Termites love to dig in the soil. That's how they find their food. It's how they find their water. And they're prepared to go deep in dry places. The deepest known termite tunnels are found here in Western Australia, up in the Kimberley, 80 metres down. Now, if we compare that with human digging, say mines, and compare it to the size of our bodies, termites go down a lot deeper than a human mind. A few species come above ground and build mounds. The tallest mounds are about seven metres high. So again, if we think about human constructions 
and we think about how large they can be and compare them to a termite mound and our body sizes, again, much larger. Termites dig deep, build high, find food. How do they coordinate these behaviours? Like honeybees, they're busy and live complicated lives. Well, it's not their brain power. Termites have about 100,000 neurons. You need around 100,000 termites to equal the number of neurons in your human brains. But even that many termites together doesn't make them smart. Instead, they have a process called self-organisation. Each individual termite just follows a few very simple rules. If this happens, then do that or else something else. Those mounds, maybe one gets damaged. That means that harsh drying light gets inside. It's bad for the termites. That light is a trigger. If the termite sees light, then they go to the light, the breach in the mound, get mud and start repairing it until there's no more light. If there's no mud, go to the bottom of the mound to the soil, collect mud and bring it back. So these simple rules spread across multiple individuals. We see emergent complex behaviour. Teams of mud builders, teams of mud collectors, and together they quickly and efficiently repair the mound. Computer scientists are using termites as inspiration for robotics. They are building autonomous robots that have been programmed with the same simple rules that are used by termites. And these complex emergent behaviours appear in these robots and they can build simple walls. Maybe in the future, termite robots are going to build our houses, which would be pretty ironic given natural termites have such a <laughs> reputation for destroying them. Now, termites aren't using any vision when they're doing this, right? Remember, they're blind. They rely on other senses, particularly their sense of touch. Termites get more information from the world through vibrations than anything else. Some of my research has shown that termites can tell how big a piece of wood is just by nibbling on one corner and listening to it. They also listen for what's around them. They can identify their own species from a different termite species from that chewing. They can identify an ant just from the sound of its footsteps. And remember, ants are their worst enemies. So termites eavesdrop on the world to understand where they are in it. And indeed, we can eavesdrop on termites to understand more about them. Now, they're not just listening. They're also talking. Termites have an alarm signal, which is a vibration. Most of them bash their head against the ground. And that's how they signal fear to warn their nestmates. And this has affected the way termites do construction. Unlike all other soil dwelling animals, termites line their tunnels with a special kind of plaster made out of poo and mud. Now this hardens, this plaster then supports the tunnel and stops it from collapsing for years. But this hard layer of plaster is also an excellent medium for those vibrations to travel through. They will go further and faster along this plaster than through soil in general. And that allows the entire colony to communicate with each other quickly and efficiently. Now you did hear me right. They are building with poo. Did you know termites make four kinds of poo? <laughs> now termites have really complicated guts, much more complicated than a four chambered stomach you get in a ruminant like a cow. So maybe it's not that much of a surprise. The first kind of poo is regular waste. It's what happens after complete digestion of food and it's no longer useful. But it does have nitrogen and other nutrients that are useful for plants. The second kind of poo is a well-digested, nutrient-rich sort of broth. And they feed that to the queen and the king and the baby termites. Thoughtful and delicious. The third kind of poo is less digested. It's more of a sort of lumpy porridge. And they feed that to other workers 
and other soldiers. And I'll let you decide if that's more or less delicious than the broth. <laughs> and the fourth kind of poo is used for building. It's a kind of cement. So termites get their cement poo, they get the mud and a lot of water and mix it together to make their building materials. Making it wet makes it pliable and easy to manipulate. Termites need a lot of water for themselves, remember? Thin exoskeletons lose a lot of water by drying out. So they need to find water. And they go looking for water a lot, remember? In the Kimberley, 80 metres deep. It's not a problem for termites. So termites have a special piece of anatomy. It's called a water sac, and it sits next to their salivary glands in their body. Termites are the only insects that have these water sacs, and they're the only insect that moves large volumes of water over any distance. Now, that's useful to us. So you homeowners out there, you might be pleased to hear that a pest inspector can find termites in your house with a special instrument that measures the moisture in the walls. But outside the house, it's important in the soil. When termites bring groundwater up into the topsoil where they mostly live, it moistens that soil. And that's good for plants, especially plants with shallow roots. So some work I was involved with in tropical rainforest found termites increased seedling survival during dry periods because of the way they move water. And it's also true for crops, many of which have shallow roots. The first research was done in Africa on small traditional farms. It was found termites clean up the fields. They eat the stubble and waste litter from the previous season's crop. They improve soil nutrients moisture and that increases plant survival on the next season. It's also true in Western Australia. Research I've done in the wheat belt on our much larger, more mechanised farms has found termites increase wheat production by 36% in dry years. Now, you already know of other small soil dwelling creatures that help plants to grow. Earthworms. But did you know 200 years ago, farmers thought earthworms were a pest and should be killed? It's actually in their names. Worm and vermin have the same language root. Charles Darwin, in his last book, showed us how earthworms build and nourish soils and therefore help plants to grow. It was Charles Darwin who changed the reputation of earthworms and now we love them. I think we should consider termites to be six-legged earthworms, but in dry landscapes. Earthworms don't live there. They can't transport water the way termites can. But both earthworms and termites carry out the same soil working processes. They both help plants to grow. So termites need an earthworm makeover and we need to learn to love termites the way we love earthworms. So the next time you encounter a termite, perhaps you're out bush and you see a big mound. Maybe it's along a suburban street and you see a pest control van. Or maybe it's when you're buttering your breakfast toast. <laughs> I hope you think about termites. Think about their simple but sophisticated social behaviour. Those ecosystem services, working the soil, helping plants to grow, helping put food on our plates and helping to support us humans too. <laughs>